Yeah, that's a really good question because we have known for a long time that the impact flux was really high during the early Earth. And you know, for, for many decades, there's been a general assumption that these impacts would have had a negative effect on early life. However, in the last couple of years, there's been an increasing recognition that impacts might actually have been helpful for not only the origin of life, but also the early evolution of life. Much of this is based on modeling and some modern or phanerozoic analog studies. Uh, so for me, as a geologist, I took that as an opportunity to actually study some of our ancient impact record uh, in sedimentary rocks of the Archean Eon. So we went out, studied the S2 impact, uh, which was between 40 and 60 kilometers in diameter. So importantly, in terms of mass, which is what we really care about, it was between 50 and 200 times bigger than the Chicxulub impact that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. So what we are seeing is, you know, of course there are negative effects. We see the passage of a tsunami that ripped up the seafloor. We see evidence for atmospheric heating from the impact that actually started boiling the surface oceans. Uh, and of course there would have been darkness because of all the dust uh, that was injected into the atmosphere. Um, however, what was quite surprising is that we also see really positive effects. So we see an increase in phosphorus and even more importantly an increase in iron in the sediments right after the impact. And especially with the increase in iron, we actually see the biosphere responding to it. So overall, what we can say is that while these impacts certainly had short-term negative effects, the early biosphere, which as you remember, was only a really simple single cellular organism, was able to not only recover really quickly, but that there might have been actual mass blooms after these impacts.